of North Hills Virtual Basketball Camp. I hope you enjoyed week one and are ready for another set of drills, memorizing verses, and learning more about the game of basketball and God. We would love to see videos of you memorizing your scripture and doing the drills. And I hope you have your basketball ready, your water, and I'll see you on the court. Hey everyone, my name is Micah and I'll be teaching you guys the devotion for today. Our virtue is self-control, which means choosing to do what you should do, not what you want to do. And our verse is Proverbs 25 to 28. A person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. We'll talk more about this later, but for now, have a good practice, work hard, and I'll see you in a bit. I'm Amanda Watson. You might know me from Upward of doing some refing. I coached a couple years, but today we're going to talk about triple threat and how to attack the basket from that position. But first, we're going to start with some stretches. So let's go ahead and bring the ball all the way up above our head. Open up that chest. Open up those shoulders. The ball, you want to keep it on the tips of your finger. Get really comfortable with the ball in your hand. Let's bring it all the way down between our legs. Let yourself hang there. Keep that ball between your hands. You can kind of gently go back and forth with it. Don't lock your knees on stretches, so keep your knees nice and soft. Let's bring that ball over to the right. And let's bring it over to the left. Let's go back up to the top. Bring your feet in together. Let's take it around our body. You can get some. Let's bring it back one more time to the right. To the middle. Tap that ball back and forth. And to the left. Okay, you guys ready? We're gonna do triple threat. Triple threat, you guys probably know, it's probably old news, but you're gonna always remain on the balls of your feet. You never wanna be caught in basketball ever back on your heels. This is a position where you're gonna fall over, you're not gonna be ready to explode. Basketball, you wanna be able to explode to the basket at any time. So I'm up here on the balls of my feet. They are shoulder width apart, my knees are, I'm facing the basket, my feet are facing the basket, my shoulders are facing the basket. I am in triple threat. The ball is down. This is not triple threat. Someone can take the ball. The ball is down. Guarded. Triple threat. I can do three things. That's why it's a triple threat. I can pass. I can dribble. Or I can be ready to shoot. Okay, when you get the ball and you're gonna go in the triple threat, usually it's off a pass, I'm gonna go in a triple threat. I do a little tiny jump stop. The jump stop does not have to be exaggerated, but it is so that I have not established a pivot foot. The biggest mistake that you can make in triple threat is establishing your pivot foot too early and then accidentally switching it and you get called for travel, okay? I hate having to do that as a ref. So make sure that when you go into triple threat, you aren't establishing a pivot foot yet. Okay, now usually when I establish a pivot foot, I am right-handed, so my pivot foot is my left, and I like to attack with my right foot because it is the most powerful, and it is also the foot that I'm going to be putting up to be able to shoot, okay? So when I get the ball, I'm going into triple threat, and I'm gonna create space from my, from my defense, because if I get the ball here in triple threat and my defense is right here, I can't do anything yet. I can't see, I can't do anything. So I get the ball, I'm in triple threat, I am making sure that I am facing the basket first and then I'm going to create some space so I get the pass here and I'm going to create space I'm creating space by coming into them not showing them the ball I'm going to create space here or I can create space here so when I come all the way around I'm coming down under the defense's reach and back up onto my hip. I have established that this is my pivot, but I have to remember that only my right foot can move now. So I'm gonna create space, either by jabbing here, pulling through, or up over my head. 
up over my head. I am strong, my elbows are out. This is part of my defense. You don't want to get close to someone that's doing this. If I try to, this, this isn't scary, this is going to make someone want to back up. So get strong and get big. So when you're in triple threat, you want to make sure that you square up to the basket. It's not about a shot, it's about the best shot. And it might not be your shot, it might be your teammate's shot. So make sure that you are square to the basket. I am facing the floor, it is open so that I can see where my teammates are. If I've determined that a pass right now isn't the best thing, I'm going to come down in triple threat and I'm going to have three options. We're going to talk about the jab and go, the jab and shot, and the jab and cross. No matter what they are, we are trying to fake out the defense. We know, you and me, know that when you play defense, you're looking at the person's hips because they can't fake with their hips, but you can fake with your head, your shoulders, and your arms. So we're gonna hope that their eyes are in the wrong spot and we're gonna try to be very convincing. I'm gonna have the ball in triple threat. I'm gonna keep the ball away from them, but I am going to be exaggerated in my head movements and in my shoulders and in my arms so that they are convinced that I'm trying to do. In triple threat, when you attack the basket, the way to be the most successful is to know how to read your defense. So we're in triple threat, we're gonna read our defense. The way that you read, their de read your defense is where their feet go, because they can't go anywhere without their feet. So I'm here and I'm going to jab. That is taking my foot, that is not my pivot, it's not the one that I've des designated a pivot, my, op my opposite foot, and I am going to do a quick step, not with the ball, I'm gonna protect the ball, a quick step, and now I'm reading my defense. And in this half a second is gonna determine what I am going to do next. So I am going to jab. If my defender comes with me, but not past my foot, they are giving me a lane to the basket. That is what I'm trying to do is create a lane and create space for myself. So I'm here and I jab. If that defender doesn't move over and does not go past my foot, I am going to continue that step, put the ball on the floor and go past my defender. Now you cannot, when you jab to go, you cannot leave with the ball. They're going to swat it out of your hand. So I need to make sure that the ball is on my hip. When I jab and go, my arm is going up. My pivot foot is coming up to block them in. And I'm going to go around them to the basket. You don't want to take a million steps to get to the basket. It is a couple hard dribbles. You are going in. You are hoping for the score or you're help, hoping for the foul. Triple threat. Pump fake, jab, if they don't move enough, step around, keep them behind me and go to the basket. Okay, so we talked about triple threat. We talked about protecting the basketball, remaining on the balls of your feet and being ready. We talked about reading our defense, specifically looking at their feet and where they are going. We've talked about the jab and go. When they meet us at our foot but don't go over, we're gonna take that lane. When we get back, we're gonna talk about the jab and shoot and the jab and cross. Both of these are effective ways to attack the basket when you are being tightly defended. But go ahead and get a drink, hear some Jesus, and I'll see you soon. I hope you had a good first half of practice. I hope you guys are working hard. Make sure you stay hydrated and take this time for devotion to just chill out, have a rest before the rest of practice. Like I said before, we're gonna be talking about self-control. Um, have you guys ever had the feeling when you shot a basketball and immediately you knew it wasn't gonna go in? It's an awful feeling. You just have to watch and then your teammates have to get the rebound. Of course, one shot isn't the reason why we win or lose. The game is full of split-second decisions where players have to decide to put it up or pass. The key is working as a team, giving each other the best chance to succeed and trying hard to get the ball back when we miss. But I think we've all experienced that feeling before, watching the ball sail off course and wishing we hadn't taken the shot. Do you know the same thing happens with the words we say? If you don't have self-control, we can find ourselves saying something we really wish we hadn't. We might say something mean or hurtful without thinking. We might say something inappropriate trying to be funny. <clears throat> I know I've been there before. I'm sure you guys have the same experiences. The problem is, once these words are out, we can't take them back. We can't unsay them. We can ask for forgiveness, and we should, but still, the damage is done. It's like we've shot an air ball, and we have to stand there and cringe while it comes crashing back to earth. <clears throat> 
That's why we need to choose our words carefully. We need to choose self-control. That's choosing to do what you should, not what you want to do. <clears throat> Remember, our words don't have the power, don't just have the power to hurt. We can build people up with our words too. We can choose to be positive with the things we say. When we do that, it's like we've got a lined up open shot that goes straight to the basket. <clears throat> so how do you avoid shooting an air ball? How do you sink the three? We can't just say the first thing that pops into mind. You've got to get in the habit of stopping to think and actually choosing words instead of just saying them. Take time to ask God for help when you feel like some when you feel like saying something you might regret. That little pause might be just what you need to make the wise choice instead. <clears throat> So I just want to challenge you guys, like what the devotion was saying, um, before you speak, make sure you think about what you're going to say and how that can have an impact. I know it's hard not to react out of instinct and it's easy to just lash out with our words, say something mean, but we always have to remember um, how the other person is feeling and how it's going to impact how they feel. Um, so I just want to pray for us before we close out this devotion. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day and thank you for this time to play basketball um, just to get better at basketball but also learn about more about what how you want us to act. Thank you for um, teaching us about self-control. I pray that when um, <clears throat> things get hard or it's easy and instinctual to speak out of anger or speak out of hurt that you'll give us a peace and a pause just to think about what to say and I hope that our words reflect your spirit and your truth and your love. <clears throat> uh, help us to have a good rest of practice. Keep us safe and in your name, amen. Okay, so we talked about the jab and go to the basket. Now we're gonna talk about the jab and shoot. So we are here, we have nobody open to pass to, we're here. If we jab step, remember we are taking one quick step to them, trying to convince them what we're gonna do. If they back up and we are in our shooting range, we're gonna go ahead and take that shot. That is why when you are in triple threat, your hands should look like you're gonna shoot. This isn't triple threat. You might be right, you're not ready to do anything really from this position. You wanna make sure that you are in a passing and a shooting position. So if I jab, protecting the ball, and my defender backs up, I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to shoot. If I'm at the three point line and that's not my shot, I'm not going to shoot. I'm not going to shoot. When I jab step and they back up, if I am in my range, I'm going to go ahead and, and shoot and shoot that shot. Okay, so we've talked about the jab and go, the jab and shot. Now that we're going to talk about the jab and cross. It has, it's a little bit more technical in the feet. Okay, so I'm going to have the ball here. Remember, I'm reading my defense. So I'm going to give a jab step. If the person comes and blocks off, so they don't back up, they're still up on me, but now they are blocking this lane, I am going to take what's called a load step. I am going to step back. It is very quick. I'm going to show it to you sped up, but I'm going to do it slow right now. I'm jabbing. They take off this lane. I see this one. I'm going to take a load step because I want them to come with me a little bit. I need to switch hands. I can't just switch hands like this. Okay, so I have two ways I could switch hands depending on where their hands are. So either I'm going to take my load step and bring the ball quickly low or I'm going to take my load step and bring the ball quickly high. Notice how I kind of went up behind my head a little bit. If they reach for the ball here, it's going to be a foul. And it's really strong here, okay? So I'm not here. I'm going to be up here. So I have two ways to switch to my left hand because if I'm dominant right and this is the way that I'm going, I need to dribble with my left. You need to learn how to dribble with your left. That's another video for another time. I have the ball. I'm here. They've cut off this position. I need to get it to my left hand. I'm going to choose to go low. I'm going to take my load step back. I'm going to go quickly low under. Now I'm going to take my right foot. I'm going to block my defender. Right? They followed me. They're here. I'm taking a step right. I'm blocking them in and I'm going to take the ball down. I'm going to pick up my left foot and now I'm going to attack the basket in a straight line. Okay? This is not a time to take a journey. You are taking the most direct route to the basket. Okay? So let's look at that one more time. Sped up. I'm here. I jab. They cut off. Load step down over. Cross. 
Okay, so I have a deep fender now and I'm going to read his feet because that's how I'm going to read my defense. So I've gotten the pass, a little jump, a little hop step and I am in triple threat. I'm going to protect the ball. I'm going to jab. He doesn't move so I'm going to go past him. So I'm going to jab, I'm going to dribble, protect, I'm going to step around him and I'm going to attack the basket. So notice that when I came here and I jabbed, I have to bring my left foot around. I have to lock him in because if not, he's going to take his foot and he's going to step back and he's going to um, block my path to the basket. So I'm going to lock his foot in, jab, dribble, lock, and go. Okay, we just talked about the jab and go. Now we're going to talk about the jab and shot. So if, if I'm reading my defense if I, and I'm in my shot position, right, I am in my range, I can jab and shoot. So I'll jab, my defender backs up, I'm going to reclaim my space, get back into my shooting position, and I'm going to shoot that shot. Let's do it a little bit faster. I get the ball, triple threat, jab, backs up, and I'm going to shoot. That's why it's important in triple threat, your hand is in shooting position. I don't want to be here. I want to be ready to pull back and shut. Okay, so now we're in our third attack the basket move from triple threat. I have jab and go, jab and shoot. This time I'm going to jab and cross. I'm going to read my defense. I'm going to jab. They're going to move. It's going to give me this position. I'm going to take a load step and draw them with me or they can stay. I'm going to switch hands. I'm going to go under. Remember, you can go under quickly or you can go over. Either way, I'm staying away from their hands. So I'm here, under, again my feet. I'm going to take a step and lock him in and I'm going to dribble with my left hand to attack the basket. Let's look at that a little faster. I got my pass, triple threat, I'm going to jab, cross and go. Okay, so from this triple threat position, when I'm going to attack the basket, I am calm, cool, and collected. This is not a time to panic, which is why you need to practice your footwork. So after this video, sometime this week, go ahead and practice your footwork. Practice getting into triple threat so that it's natural that every time you catch the ball, you're down in triple threat. Your knees are bent, you're on the balls of your feet, and you're protecting the ball. And then practice your footwork. Practice taking a step and dribbling and locking out your defender. Practice jabbing and coming back into a shot and practice jabbing, crossing quickly and locking out your defender to go to the basket. If you practice this footwork out of the game, when you come into the game, you're going to be more confident in triple threat knowing that you can attack the basket. I had fun hanging out with you guys today. I hope that you learned something. I think it's awesome that you're taking time out of your weeks and your month here to work on fine tuning those fundamentals. Those fundamentals may seem tedious sometimes, but when you're working on this footwork, you worked on dribbling last week, those small pieces are gonna, you're gonna be able to put together for a really impressive game. So make sure that you turn into Zoom later on so that you can meet coaches and you can ask questions and you can just be in rapport with other basketball players. Have a great week. Work on your footwork so it comes natural in the game. See you later. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's practice. I just wanna remind you guys of our virtue, which was self-control, and our verse was Proverbs 25, 28. A person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. So I just wanna encourage you guys to think before you speak, say words that are encouraging, and words that are gonna build others up and also please God. So remember that your words have the power to hurt, and they also have the power to encourage. Um, so thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next week.